first, and uh, I'm impressed at how well Monet is farmed. I mentioned earlier it's not a hero that recovers that well, but he's only 100 net worth behind the gyrocopters. We see LFY smoke. They might find a Kuroki. No, not quite. He makes it back up to the high ground. Getting this army would be smoke. great, though, honestly. Now they're going to block off the Chen. He does have some help nearby, but Kuro taking huge damage. And that'll be the end of him. Looks like they'll get to clear out his army also. They've chased GH too, and he's in trouble. Oh, Ohio blocks nice. him out. They stop the roll, and there is nowhere for that Earth Spirit to go. It's going to be Ohio that gets credit with one last purification. They see Miracle on the side. He does not have a Shadow Blade. Afu with the oh, Blink Dagger, the Echo. They want this. Puck is here with the Dream Coil on the entire team. The tether gets broken. Can they, they still secure this kill, though? They don't have the detection. He out drops the Death Ward. But the Shadow Blade comes off cooldown, and it is enough to keep him alive. That is rough. Oof. They that's, might, uh, yeah. I, like I don't Invoker. know if they saw the Shadow Blade before yeah. they did that smoke because he was in the jungle farming. So It's like uh, every pro game, the Invoker gets ganked. He gets away once with Colossal Wax, right? Yep. And he just goes in the Ghost Walk, and you're like, ah, damn it. Yeah, look at this deep ward, though. The Dyer get it down up on uh, the high ground. So great vision of Liquid coming in if they want to mount a defense here. They will smoke up. The smoke gets broken. GH, GH. comes in with a huge stun, huge magnetize. The follow-up damage will be there to get a kill on Yao. Will Liquid have the damage to continue to pursue? It's Aku on the back line trying to get out super stealing a lot of damage from Matumba man now the GA from Ohio they actually kill Matumba it's a one for one another beautiful stun from GH sets it up for Miracle they kill super but now Miracle's low and he pops Monet still healthy stacking up all of these bristlebacks charges and now Kuro on the run probably not going to be able to make it out it's a pretty even fight a three for three when it's all said and done mind control is still alive but he's got the blink dagger and he's got a dream coil coming back up Night, but this is a game where it feels a little more core than luxury for the logic that uh, you just pointed out. We will see a smoke now from LFY. Shadow Fiend is invisible and looking to break the smoke. And it looks like Monet will be the bait to be in the front lines here with his team smoked up behind him. Will Liquid go for it, though? Sun onto GH. They find the Earth Spirit in the tree line, and this is going to be the end of him. It looks like Cask bouncing around. He'll be the first death of the fight. But on the other side, Monet gets completely destroyed. BKB popped by Miracle. It's a great dream coil. Yao's going to be locked in place. He'll go down. And nice silence onto the Omni Knight. No GA going to come out. It doesn't look like they've got the magic damage. Afu with a big X slam. But there's just no follow up. It makes Instantly absolutely healed. no difference. And Miracle gets a triple kill as now they chase down the Razor. It's going to be a four for nil and soon to be a five. It looks like Monet gets brought down again. That was his buyback. Oh, it's a dieback. Oh, no. Oh, my. It's an ultra for Miracle. There was also a buyback on the Earth yeah, Spirit. we're not going Roche. We're getting two sets of racks They're here. going high ground. This game, is, this might just be so over. They know Bristleback doesn't have a buyback, so yeah. he's out of the game for 70 seconds. But Razor and Omni, they don't have buybacks either because they don't have enough gold. So Liquid's going to push this as far as they can when they don't see the buybacks. I think you're absolutely right, Trent. This is two lanes barracks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. What a great call by Liquid. It's hard to make this call, too, right? Because you're, like, a little bit worried. You're like, oh, maybe we should just get that nice safe Roche, but uh, they have figured out exactly what's going I mean, on here. What an insane team fight, though. It seemed like a great start for LFY. You find the Earth Spirit, who's been the key initiator for Liquid in all of these team fights. You kill him first, but the trade is not there. The bristleback for the, the Earth Spirit is definitely not what LFY was looking for. I think just underestimating the power of the Shadow Fiend in that particular situation. But regardless, it is two lanes of barracks, and uh, what was an even game just moments ago has now swung way in favor of Liquid. 15,000. Easy to try to get back in it, but is this going to be it, Trent? The orb scouts it out. Liquid see that Roche is about half HP. Miracle is going to TP to the shrine, and I think they're going to be able to get here in time to contest this. It's going to be close, but they will have an opening. Call down to start things off. Puck with an orb across, and they are just going to try to push LFY out. Still four Dude, stacks Miracle's of the sticky. Just lurking here with this BKB ready to go. This is so tense here, Trent Pax. And now the initiation, GH jumps in. Dream Coil on three. It's not looking good for LFY. They lose the Witch Doctor. They lose the Razor immediately. Mind Control finishes off Roche, grabs the Aegis, and LFY are just getting cleaned up. They've already lost three, and that's it. They just call GG right there. They know they don't have the buybacks. That one lane of barracks is going to get brought down. And just like that, Liquid intercept Roche and find themselves a win in game number one. Well, the Bristleback was uh, certainly a bit cheeky, a little cheesy, some might say. Yeah. But uh, not my uh, favorite kind of cheese. He ain't Space on the map for Secret to farm. The smoke will get broken. It's actually another double damage on this gyrocopter. So that's part of the reason why Complexity wants to fight so badly right now. But 
Seems Secret will not give oh, them that Yassar's opening. Yeah, pinging Kyle. He knows he's sitting in those trees because of the Observer Ward mid. He really wants to jump Kyle. Pings coming out from both sides. And they're going to go right in on the Kyle. The Ice Blast does connect, and he's just going to get ticked down with a Firestorm. Oh, but now Gyro. Gyrocopter goes in hard. He brings down Yapsor, brings down Puppy. He's going to dive this tower. They get the stun on the Ace, and Lip is just going in right now. The Crimson Guard has come out, and it is going to cost two, two Lip his in. life. They also lose Z Freak in the back line. A really chaotic fight from Complexity that started so well, and now it ends up being a 3 for 3. Moo is going to try to TP home, but it won't be there as the Yule Scepter interrupts him. Now this will be another kill for Secret, so they do find the advantage in this team fight. Yeah, that... Uh, Chaos Knight doesn't need gold, dude. You see how much damage this guy puts out? He's gotten everything during the stack storm. Might be a way to actually kill her. Since mm -hmm. She doesn't have the BKB. That's true. Mute very effective against the DP. Bada, pretty far forward down bottom. Uh, also has a Halberd finished up. Needs a, a turn with the Courier, but the Disarm, of course, always good to have against Gyrocopter. Especially the Prophet. Honestly, like his only thing is he right clicks really hard. That's true. Ace is going to find another catch. It's Z Freak that, that gets caught in the trees. And on the other side, Pugna he's a with the Yules will right. survive for now. But Fada just so beefy. The Static Storm kinetic field doesn't even really slow him down that much. BKB popped by Chessie. They find that kill. But now the CK is here. Lip with his BKB on. He's putting out as much damage as he can. Magic immunity on both sides as Ace wants the reality rift but gets fogged. Down south, they're chasing Chessie into the tree line. Yapsor with the four staff, able to close the gap, takes the Orchid and sets it up for Puppy to connect with the Ice Blast. Close another the gap, they might have closed the game here. He is done. It's another chaotic He's fight. He's two minutes. One for three and yeah, out of the game. No buybacks available on the three dead heroes for complexity. They do have a glyph, but this bottom lane well, probably gonna turn to I rubble. I mean, this is a gyro with no BKB for 35 seconds. Yeah, like, there's no way. Four second stun onto Moo. This poor Pugna now silenced immediately after the stun. He gets brought no down. Reality Rift. They're going to catch Lip. He does have a buyback, but to what end here, Trent? Yeah. But is this really where oh, we want to take an engagement? Hello. Dire Courier going to fly overhead, and that'll be some free gold for Yapsor. No cargo, but. Secret still happy to find a pickoff there. The smoke has kind of been revealed as Fata charges He's in the front line. Hello. Forces the early BKB from Limp before the fight even really starts. He just runs. Can't quite commit to Fada. He gets glimpsed oh, back, but he's got the Yules. Fisher on four heroes. Now BKB popped by Moo. This is Secret's fight. They destroy Limp. Now the stun on the Kyle. He's getting caught by the Ice Blast. They still want to kill Fada, but this Underlord is just too beefy. Yaxor with a huge ultimate completely breaks up the team fight, and it's a one for four. Oh my, the ultra kill for Ace. Picture perfect for Secret yeah. as they walk into the Roche pit. Unbelievable. <laughs> that echo slam, my god, the, the health was getting chunked down. It's hard to really see any of the other damage though when CK did wow. 60 and that's nine. it. GG. 7,000 gold uh, damage actually, so yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I don't think it's too soon for Complete to call it there. No. Um, they were up against the wall. They had a super risky position in that last fight. But when you're that far behind, you got to do something risky. Ken has summoned from the Dark Troll Summoner. If they want to try to contest this, they can. EG, I don't know how concerned they are. They have the BKB they of Razor. They need to contest this. You cannot afford to give away just the EG's lineup at this yeah. point because they're playing the late game. They're skilling. Once they get that Aegis, that Aegis it secures them the next five minutes to just keep Look on Look at this farming. wraparound from EG. They're going to try to find Duster, and Duster will get blown up. They have the Plague War, though, which will spot it, but he might not be able to get out in time. Kinetic Field, they get off the Static Storm, but where's the damage? They jump in there. The Poison of it has been pretty good. They've got the Link here. BKB's up. They're going to try to fight this here. Sumail getting a little bit low, but he's got the Borrowed Time. It's a two-for-one trade. As Morphle gets dropped down, Crit gets on a Freezing Field. The Stick Charge keeping him alive, and HFN will get dropped down. It's going to be three dead for pain. Tava will find another kill. It's Misery, so Arteezy and Misery both get dropped, but they should be able to get into Roche, maybe. Tavo, of course, can be there, and Sumail has no bar time to work with now as he just used it. Blade, as he has the uh, Yash as well to work with. They're going to maybe try to push high ground with Aegis. It's on Arteezy. Yeah, it's go time. And he can even morph into... He does, he does actually morph into Weeha, and he's going to start dropping the Plague Wars and the Gel into Weeha. Weeha needs to be a little careful. They have to use the Glyph. Push continues. It's so hard to fight into if you're paying at this point. Yep, Duster's actually pushing the mid lane with yeah. his champ. They're split pushing, trying to find their own tier 3. They have to TP back, though. The tier 3 is about to fall. End of God will go, because they're still fighting, actually. Crit is trying to defend this HFN. He really wants his tower, but Crit is doing some serious work with the freezing field back at the base. In the meantime, they'll glimpse back Sumail. He's still trying to go on this tower. Weeha getting right out here. The kinetic field stopping him. They will get the kill onto HFN, actually, as they rotate another hero oh back at Sumail's unstoppable. He is just in there. He's popped the bar time. He's looking for King RD. He's slapping him down. They'll find another kill. Four dead. The only survivor is Duster, who will get 
caught out by Arteezy's Morphling, and this will allow them to push even more. This Rack's bottom, potentially the game getting out of control here for Pain, and this is looking extraordinarily good for EG. The, the bad news, I guess, for EG is they do have to push into a Tier 2 tower, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. They can go top if they really wanted to. Yeah. That's a funny one that you could do. Yeah. But I didn't think the true grab. I didn't think about that. That was pretty nifty. Makes me feel like a little kid again when there's some interaction like that in the game. Where Morphling can, you know, transform into any hero. You have the uh, Io, Ag's Tether, he's, so many different combinations. He's taken the uh, Venomancer, who will get off his poison over, but not before he does really anything. He just gets dropped down. Tom was going to be next to Static from is probably a little bit too late. They have to buy back onto the Tiny. RTZ is diving pretty much the well at this point. He will bring down poor Disruptor, and HFN might be next. He's going to get sent back. He does get the Doppelganger off in time. But Dustin's gonna get chased into the well. Sumail, he's not really afraid. His cheese work with, but he actually gets dropped down and can't get it off in time. And now Arteezy needs to back up. So they dive the well, but they're not really losing anything other than Sumail, who will buy back. Arteezy Ethereal Blades himself to try to get out of here alive against the PL. Pops the Spirit Lance. Adaptive Strike comes in there. That freezing field again, and it's a triple kill for Arteezy. And next might be Tabo. He gets off the Avalanche, but the Static Link is there for Deer. The Guardian Group's keeping Arteezy alive. And it's going to be everybody dead, and GG called. EG will take this game against Pain. It was a good game. It was a good game at the, get, at the beginning where they did pretty well for that tiny, but it kind of got out of control at one point it there. It did get out of control for sure, but when I look at these lineups and I look at uh, Pain's lineup, I think... He might have died had he not done it. You're right. That's just unfortunate. It's unfortunate, but it makes no real difference, right? Yeah. It's just a, it's an IO. It's not that big of a deal. No, they still got a tier tower. And they might find him anyways. Good tether, actually, just in time as the avalanche came in. Now they're looking to jump in. They found Pykett. He has his BKB. He's not able to get it off yet. Still finally fighting with this rocket brush coming in. And no one might be in trouble, actually. They get off the hand of God. It's not going to keep him alive, though. They didn't have Soul there with a the false promise. And now Roger's going to get jumped on. Ramses is in. They pop BKB for Pycat. There's the Omni Slash. They're going to tank it up with all of these heroes with Pycat. He takes a lot of damage, and they have dropped down PPD. They're jumping in with the toss. It's a double kill for Ramses with the spin now up there. And Roger's still getting chased down. Pycat getting healed up with the overcharge. Oh, Pasha. Pasha is in with the Avalanche on two, though. They don't have the Ravage available. The false promise comes out just in time on the Roger. That'll keep him alive. There's another toss back for Pasha, who is in deep. An Ultra Kill. Can he get the Rampage? 3-3 three, three might be next. The fifth and steal final it, kill, one more auto it. attack. They want to give it to him, but the purifying flame seal is keeping him alive. And now he's just juking and jiving, steal trying to find any way to survive. It. And finally, the average comes in, and they actually get the rampage. <laughs> they wanted to give it to him, and they did. Virtus Pro give Ramses the rampage, the wicked six spree. What a fight! What an initiation for Pasha, and what a huge false promise to keep Roger alive, which you thought might be the best. It looks cool. That's about it. When's the next? Uh, the question is, when's the next um, tome? Probably, I guess, in three minutes. So, we'll see if he buys it. And they are smoking CC and C Blink Dragon Tail. Where's the follow-up? They don't have any further stuns. The Breathe Fire coming in. He's actually already super low. The oh, Omni Slash. The Cleave's Eye about to fall. The Ravage comes in, but where's the counter initiation? They're not really doing that much damage. The Hand of God coming in. They're trying to find a kill. They will. It's Ramsey's. The Freezing oh Field goodness. comes out as well for PVD. They're turning this around. The BKB is up the DK, but they've already done so much work. Paja in trouble with the Rocket Barrage. They've stunned him. They're about to drop him down with a couple more auto attacks. Pycat gets a double kill. It's everybody with the exception of no one dead. All four of them getting dropped down by the Pycat Gyrocopter and that Blink Ravage from 3 3. In Jug. Plus, obviously, the other heroes to help out, but. Yep. For me, this game is on the uh, Storm. When he actually picks up more and more items, he's actually getting quite farmed now. Yeah. I know his net worth looks a little wimpy sitting there in the mid, but not bad at all. He's going to go for the fall. The Dragon Tail immediately coming out. Now CCMC is in trouble with the Blink Ravage. Comes Big in. Rabbit. Where's the fall? They've got the Frostbite coming in as well. The call down. Ramses is dead and Pasha has to run. No one pops the BKB. CC is looking for Solo in the back line. He gets up the Fall's Promise, but that's onto himself. They find a triple kill for Pycat. They're about to find four. Solo is in trouble. He's going to get dropped down. He's got the healing going through the Fall's Promise along with the Purifying Flames, but it will not keep him alive. It's four dead. Bird is pro. Oh, they almost the lose five. They might lose five. They will lose five. No one gets dropped down as well. All five dead. Now only a 2k lead for Virtus Pro. Optic have turned it back around and they are now going to push into the tier 3. There's only one buyback. Virtus Pro, they might lose racks here. That is unbelievable from Optic. CCNC gets the Orchid off on Solo's Oracle so we can't actually cast any abilities to save people. And then... 
probably it's over at that point. And a Dota coming back in a big way here. <laughs> Two sets of racks up on the former major winner, the last major winner, and VP, they're going to try to head into Roche now. A 6k advantage for Optic. They have no Ravage. DC is going to look for Solo, though. They've got the Orchid. Good hand of God to keep him alive, but Pyke oh, is doing so much damage now. They've got the Omni Science. It's not going to do that much. Uh, then maybe down, bring down 3-3, three, three, but no one is trouble trying to man fight. His BKB is done. It's a double kill for Pyke. Ravage will get himself a double kill, but he's low, and he's got a man fight against this Gyrocopter, who is absolutely gigantic, and that is it. It is GG. Optic able to turn it around from a 15k deficit. They bring the game back. They win the game, and now up 1-0 in this Swiss format, Brax. Wowzers. What a oh. game. Oh, miss. Ice 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 trying to get to a Midas next. They have a big smoke. There was a Dire Scan, but it doesn't connect. The Radiant Scan at the Roche Pit, but they don't know that they're all smoked up and ready to go with this fight. And we'll see what happens. Armel will blink away. He almost spotted this. Good oh, positioning this. from Sam H, which might break the smoke. No, they're going to go all the way around. They're, they're about this. to run into the entire team. Great bro. It's on to two, the infest out. Good neck and time. The RPG, but it's on to Sam H, who gets a Ravage. It's on to three. Look at the damage being built. The Ravage follow up from Tim. It's a double kill for Armel. What a turnaround. Mineski, great initiation. Now the Epicenter Center getting channeled for Japs. I'm not sure how much this is going to do, though. A lot of damage, but really, they're so tanky on Raven, even on Armel, that Japs might just die here. They've got the appeal is four dead. Mushi is able to TP away, but Sam H with a counter initiation. He got RP'd, and then the Kraken shell came out. The Tim's fall up with that impale. At least, but mostly sentries, to be honest, at this point in the game. They're trying to get as much map control as they can with the limited amount of space they've got. But, uh... Here we go. It looks like there's a smoke coming here from the Radiant team. They're trying to find something. TNC looking for a target. It's gonna be the Disruptor. Blink and Pale, good Burrow tricks to counter an HG ship. There is the Blink Ravage. They get off the RP and the BKB in time, but again, Raven is there and he's just hitting everybody. They've got to run for now the Death Ward. They blow up the Death Prophet as her exorcism comes out, so that's down, and so is she for another 74 seconds. Now the Magnus is going to get dropped down. A double kill for Tim's. That might be enough for TNC just to take the racks and maybe even the game here, Brax. Assassin coming in. I feel like if they had something else to play off of, then Nyx Assassin wouldn't feel so content just sitting in the mid lane. But both offlaners were so static that there was actually nothing else for them to do in the entire game. Right? And that's one of the problems with these uh, greedy offlaners like the Magnus. It's just they don't actually do anything. No. Even with an advantage, they can't actually pressure lane. I mean, look at this. Raven has not a care in the world. Can't do anything. Good Ravage counter initiation. They still have the Aegis even with this. They're gonna RP. This is actually looking pretty good. They're gonna take another hero down. It's Armel. The Epicenter gets used. They are gonna use their BKBs. They will get channeled. Raven will pop his own. And now Ice 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 is on the run. You killed him once. I don't know if you can kill him twice. The Exorcism is actually doing a lot of damage. The Throne's starting to get up by these creeps, though. There's no Tier 4s available. Impale on to 2 from Tim's, and now they will find a great Death Ward, which will bring down the DP. She's forced to buy back, but with no Exorcism, it is rough. Meanwhile, Mushi is chasing him down. He's getting low. Raven, this will be a huge kill, but he pops the cheese. Oh. He pops the cheese and turns on to Mushi. He gets taken down. Zapped by Armel. He's dead, and now they're looking for more. Pushing them back into the well, trying to finish this game off. Off, and it should end right now as GG is called and CNC with a pretty big upset against Mineski here with our fifth game of the day now done. Yep, Nullifier doing work there in the last fight, but it's not enough. No. They needed that. An Underlord, because if he pops his ultimate, he's probably going to live. It's going to be hard to kill him in that time duration. So that's why it's so smart for Thunder to put him up there. Do you know why 11 is saving the skill points? Um, on the off chance that he wants it to farm faster, maybe. Oh, uh, I think I'm he needs it for sure. a fight right now because here comes VGJ from all sides. The storm is beautiful. Dark Willow manages to break free. The cooldown is nice. And where is this Ravage? Now will come out. Five heroes connected on, but they've already lost that Dark Willow. The tide will fall. There was way too much damage to get a glimpse back. Fenrir, no escaping for the Yoga. And VGJ will claim the tier one tower in mid lane as well. Fortification will only delay the inevitable. That felt very much like a fight that Vici Gaming did not want to fight. I mean, you could see it by Old Eleven finally reluctantly skilling his ultimate. I felt like the time he needed to use that was right at the start. Yep. Disable the, uh, oh, the initiation. Oh, God. Oh. dead, too. Huge catch there. The benefit of uh, Night Stalker right there. Latinum trying to fear everybody out. He's going to get pitted up. Enki. And they, they have a Solar Crest. They're coming to smoke. And fight. It was far enough away from the vision. But it's already too late. Aegis the Immortal in the, is in the hand of the Medusa. So either they commit to this, and well, there's your BKB off from Scylla. Allowed to get the ulti out and doesn't get hit by the Ravage at all. And Ori can't do enough damage. He's still on the run, the Spirit Siphon. 
Making Silo way too powerful, he even glues back the Dark Willow. So this fight splits multiple parts. Dark Willow will focus on her dying in the river. Nothing more paparazzi could do for her. And the chase is on to Ori. Run south He's as so quick fast. as he can. <laughs> He is fast, but Hunter in the Night's off cooldown in one second time, and this will give him the vision oh, into no. the void, and Ari getting caught, pants down in the trees. And that's a full minute on the sideline for him, and look where they're going. Everybody come together, everybody push mid, because that's where Freeze is. And Paparazzi, if you thought you are going to have this fight, you thought wrong! You've already lost your Tide Hunter, and now you're going to lose Paparazzi! He walks into the pit, can force himself up the hill, but Fate continues to give unparalleled power through his vision as the Night Stalker. Paparazzi starts his TP as very oh, late, and he'll end up going down as well. This is just a disaster for VG Gaming. Yeah, and they, a great thing for VG Thunder. I mean, the, their landing stage went well, but they call it. ever since then, they just haven't had the capability to take a, a to fight on their terms. And the ones that they did have, Thunder was just way better positioned. And then it just got to this like farm level where Thunder took a couple towers and like they couldn't actually move around to get kills. Thunder was... But you knew this was inevitable. Like, OG was just preparing this top lane. They don't have the vision up. That's thanks to Na'Vi having this observer and sentry. Just on the backwards hill to the east of the tier 2. That's a really cool thing about OG's draft with their two supports is that oh, both fight. of them No, you're walking kills. into a sentry ward. You got caught here before. He puts out his own observer. At least gets the vision. But S4, the jumping. Crystallize got his BKB off well before that. The Beastmaster won't be so lucky. Getting kicked up. Crystallize now losing that static link because he was on the storm brewing. That won't oh, help. But on to no tail. That'll work. No, you also have to pro protect him and take him out of harm's way. So Crystallize will pick up the double kill. Here comes Resolution. Waveforming in. But the BKB protecting Dendi. g looking for another quick kill. There's only the Disruptor, but G-Rex, so much damage, he'll get the Magnetize off. The Navi will have issues with that, but Resolution just has no more friends to damage with. Ooh. Oh, he banished him! It was the last point of a second before that TP was going to complete for Resolution. He can E-Play pop somebody, but Lil just looking to dodge it with Mirror Image. No way to really get the hit, and OG lose four. Not the best way to start a fight. Walking uphill, going for the D-Ward. That, mm -hmm. Like, No Tail's build was actually the wrong thing this game, I think. The BKB has not actually benefited. He needs like a Shiva's there or something. Maybe. Something to survive. GRX trying to create space. Silence doesn't kick. Here comes your TP. Death Prophet to the front lines. In through the back. It's going to be the Brute Master split. This is OG's chance to potentially turn this fight around. LeBron, he'll come out of the imprisonment. GRX is almost his job to kill him off because they've separated out. Someone kill LeBron. Okay, the Storm Ruling and GRX will finally do it. But Resolution trying to combine together with the S4 Ruling. And the E Blade Pop won't be enough because you got the help to come back from Chris Slice's cheese. So Resolution, man up. Who is stronger? He's got more time to hit. He's got no damage. It's next. And if almost 300 resolution oh, gets help from Jirak! Oh boy! He's like, oh yeah, I can turn back into this guy that has a ton of health. Yeah. He never used static link. What's he oh. All right, Rezo, <laughs> Rezo is not ready to play Morphling. I, I, that is like... He, that should have been like the potentially if they find somebody. That's a fun so, item on Jirax too. You've actually got yourself a Heaven's Hal, but this is going to become more important considering how early those BKBs were arrived. So, like, Crystallize is down to a 5 second BKB. And Dendi's got a 7 second. They jump in, Resolution roared up. They're gonna keep pushing him away. Glimmer K protection too. As the BKB to their Song of the Siren. Lil jumps in deep, they want to isolate no -tell, But now they have to turn off the song. They got to isolate themselves. The storm is down, but the damage from Resolution! It's so big! Crystallize can't survive this! Resolution, he just stands all ground, killing off almost all of Na'Vi. He can't get the triple kill, because Fly took out Dendi. But they're going in deep, no buybacks available, and this is going to be serious damage to the base of Na'Vi. Oh. Unless Jirax gets himself killed, he entices General enough to stick around, and there it is. GG is called Man. as OG. It's been going back and forth, the tussle, but finally Resolution is able to stand his ground in the fight, and Na'Vi don't get the advantage. That was an uphill battle for OG, and it really shouldn't have been. But they finally pull it out in the end, it works. And goes back in the fountain. Okay. Yeah. Somebody's gonna use those. They can make a difference. It actually feels good to use one like mid game when you're like 30% HP. You're like, I'm going back into the way. That rider blinks. Plasso is onto Underlord, however. He's able to get the pin on pin down. It's actually the one from the Rubik, too. So Underlord being massively stunned. 14 okay, one shots available. Are they gonna fight this? Yes, they will. The Ice Blast is coming in. It'll connect on the Rubik, but it was Carcass epicenter damage that really started to turn this around. Necro off. 
Kurdar. Defensive Kurdar. Yeah. And he still can't get it with the blast, the Necro Blast from Pogna. Uh, to the RNG, or uh, at least whatever mindset is affecting Vega with their sentry wood placement. They don't oh, find the any of these in there. Know. They got both of them. The Fable says Slayers to help out with Zone Virus Strike. Sandstorm protects him for a moment, but then Gyrocopter, he's trapped, and they start draining him. The BKB, one more attack will do it. He's so low. Faces Boy went back in again, but to Crepify Blast, you could say goodbye as a 1 1 trade off. Well. SCC did burn the BKB, but they won't care. They're gonna go straight up mid. Crimson and Pipe being burned. This will be mid racks. Oh, there's a sentry, okay. They have Blink Lasso. Actually, they can do this. Chrono is available. I mean, Faceless Voice, they have the Vanishing Blink Jump, and now they have to control SECC. They don't do so. The Rubik will drop down. He's trying to kill the Ancient Apparition under Shock Faith. He's got the space to cover by Dream Blast. No! He had one job. He wanted the Ancient Apparition and to keep the rest of them occupied. But without the DK and the Chrono, the damage was there for Newbie to fight in the front lines under the tier 4 tower. And Void goes down. No Chrono, no Void for 40 seconds. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. He chose the wrong target. He started on the, the Pug now. He realized, oh, he's got an Aegis. Let's change targets. And he then he was one extra one hit. hit. If he just went straight for the A, it would have been a kill. And probably he would have lived. They're looking for the kill onto, what, AA again? Bar a strike, catching the Chen. Moogie wants to let one more blast go. That'll kill off the tier 3 tower. Aegis is still there for the moment, and it will proc. But SCCC underneath the sentry ward. He has no his visible. Burns the BKB up once more. Moogie starts his run out. Lizzie just trying to slow him down. Moogie starts the drain. Needs more life available. SCC keeps on the back lines, but here comes your representative from Karka. Into Slayer. Gets a revenge kill to the death of their partner. But SK just can't survive long enough. Even SCC getting hit by that flame break. A lot of dot damage. Extra help is there with the time dilation, but they can't see him. Where's the reveal? They don't know where to go right now. SCC just wants to weigh out this one. He's done no. Uses the one charge, just gets a kill onto the Chen. I don't know if he can continue to survive this one. His, oh, his Shadow Blade's in 12 seconds time. The homing missile will chase him down. He will fall. I'm going to say that was kill. not worth it. <laughs> Out of tower on their bottom lane. But the issue you're going to be... Actually, you got the Ancient Army from Chen that can keep the mid lane at bay. You have to bring it in for the fight because they're going to need their Granite Golem. Undershock's waiting for the jump. There's a Sentry Ward down, so we cannot use the Shadow Blade to get in close. And here comes Kaka, under the Observer Ward. Blizzy again can see him. Into the Firefly, gets the lasso over Romugi. A huge target if they can kill him off. But that hit from KP, right in the money. Ice Blast will only have this real chill effect. And KP, he's trying to get out, but it will not work. And he doesn't have enough life and didn't have his ultimate. But here comes your epicenter. And the Chronosphere, but the epi damage still continues to pulse out from the Sand King. Time walk away, get yep. out of this fight. They need to. They're splitting all ways, Baker, but Rapier. too many ways. The Rapier is down, and that's probably the game. Karko's now got plus 330 damage. Why not? Slayer will do his TP, but no. Barra strikes there from Karka. Vega are all pushing up the daisies, and that is probably the game right there. And on discs and were GG, way too good. In fact, there, it is. That's the game. It was so hard for Vega to win at that point. Like the the rapier was definitely a threat. The chrono is a threat. But Nubi just keeps building all these Aetherland or all these uh, what's it called Aeon discs. Yep. And then it just completely counters Batrider. Batrider's countered. Chronosphere is countered. Just the overwhelming gold advantage from Nubi gives them a.